Thank you very much. Thank you. Okie doke. Now we have Hebe Gibson from Te Whata Ura who will also speak on item 12. Welcome. Kia ora koutou. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, my name is Hebe Gibson and I'm a policy advisor um, at Community and Public Health. We're now part of the National Public Health Service, which is a branch of Health New Zealand Whatu Order. I work in a team that covers Te Waiponamu, the South Island region. Um, so I, I represent National Public Health Service, Te Waiponamu. So we also support the recommendation uh, to retain the existing policy for a further three years. And this is to protect the health and wellbeing of the population in Ototahi Christchurch. <coughs> Over half of councils in Aotearoa, New Zealand, have a sinking lid policy. Um, so we do support keeping the existing policy without amendment, uh, but just considering that other uh, councils in New Zealand that have sinking lid policies, and especially those that have had them for a long time, they are looking at ways to strengthen their policies, such as by not allowing club mergers. So we would encourage CCC to look at options for strengthening the policy at their next review. So, as we've discussed, um, pokies cause harm, and they're the most harmful form of gambling in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Gamblers, their family, and affected, affected others most frequently cite pokies as the form of gambling that causes harm. And in Christchurch, around half of all clients seeking problem gambling services reported that pokies was their primary mode of gambling. Uh, pokies have a high turnover, so in 2023, profits from pokies were over 93 million in Christchurch, and for New Zealand, uh, the profits from pokies was over 1 billion. Uh, so, as it stated in the council's report, um, the, the, in 2023, the Class 4 gambling expenditure in Christchurch was $234 per capita, and this was higher than the national average. Pokies are also high risk because they have design features that keep people playing. Um, this is the, the rapid speed of play on pokies, the, the lack of natural breaks from play, uh, near misses and losses disguised as wins, and these factors lead to persistent gambling. Um, so gambling is a public health issue, and it has extensive consequences for health and well-being. So it can lead to emotional and psychological distress, depression, suicide, reduced work performance uh, or educational performance, relationships breakdown and crime. And uh, it can present with other health issues such as high levels of alcohol consumption, smoking and other drug use. And it's not just a problem for individuals, it has wider impacts on families, whānau, workplaces and communities. In New Zealand, 22% of adults are affected at some time in their lives by their own or others gambling. And one problem gambler can affect at least five to 10 others. Gambling is also an equity issue. This is because some groups experience higher rates of gambling harm. And this is, includes Maori, Pacific peoples, Asian peoples and young people. As we've been discussing today, class four venues are often located in areas of socio-economic deprivation, and this means the people living in those areas are inevitably exposed to gambling. There is also evidence that class four gambling increases socio-economic disadvantage <coughs> by transferring wealth from more deprived communities to less deprived communities. And this is because class four grants are less likely to return to the communities in which they were raised. So in conclusion, we support the recommendation to keep the existing sinking lid policy, and this is because of the impacts that gambling can have on health and equity outcomes. We also support the deputation made by the Problem Gambling Foundation. Namahi Nui, thank you again for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you very much. We've got time for two questions, and they're right here, Councillor McClelland and then oh, Councillor Harrison. Thank you for your submission. Um, do you have any view, uh, there was a relatively egregious argument, in my opinion, put forward that if we allow venues to relocate their gambling machines, they're likely to move to Fendleton and, and Southcraft Beer. Do you think that that's more likely? 
and exclude people who wear gumboots as well. Mm. Uh, do you think that that's more likely or it's more likely that venues would, lo uh, would move to even lower socioeconomic mm. areas where the real estate is even cheaper? I think it's an interesting discussion and I can't present evidence on that, but I'd be interested to know what the policy controls could be to make sure that that is the that's what, how it would work, that it would go from higher deprivation, uh, higher deprivation to lower deprivation. I think in the council report it said there aren't any, um, it said there aren't known controls for making sure that's how it happens. So I think opening up the policy for relocation is risky and, I, and we wouldn't advise that. Okay. Kia ora. Um, I've had quite a bit of experience firsthand with, with gambling, um, particularly with whānau uh, when I was working in the community. And one of the key things that I noticed was, one, jackpot hunters. So they'd actually move from one pub to another for the highest jackpot, mm -hmm. mostly in the most deprived areas. Um, but secondly, um, was the, the mechanisms that you described around mergers was an interesting one. Would you be able to define what other mechanisms, mechanisms we could use noting that a lot of the controls are coming from central government? Mm. Um, so, yeah, as I said, uh, not allowing club mergers it would be an, uh, another policy control that could be used to, to strengthen the policy. Um, and there are other councils around New Zealand considering that or already have it in place. And why is that? Is that so that they can add more pokies to one club? Yeah, so I think they can go up to 18 uh, on one site. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you, Hebe, for uh, coming in. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> so next we'll welcome Janae.